this isn't World War II, nobody is going to occupy the Russian Federation with its 11 time zones. There is a certain amount of wishful thinking on all sides of this conflict when they think about how it ends. The odds are, like it or not, that the government in Russia that survives this war is going to be the government in Russia that waged this war. It's been a year since Russia launched a full-scale invasion of its neighbor, Ukraine. That didn't start the war. The war started back in 2014. But Russia's invasion on February 24th of 2022 transformed this war into something completely different. And it's been quite the year. Ukraine demonstrated wherewithal and capacity that, to be frank, surprised everybody. Russia demonstrated poor planning, poor execution, and military weakness that also, to be frank, uh, surprised everybody, including, I think, the Russians themselves. But one thing I find really interesting is that when I think back to a year ago when Russia launched the full-scale invasion, what we all expected was Russia to win rapidly, uh, at least comparatively rapidly. We at Crisis Group did anticipate that Russia was underestimating the extent of Ukrainian resistance and that would find swallowing Ukraine a lot harder than it expected. And then the European security order would effectively settle into a new Cold War of armed camps of Western states on the one hand and Russia on the other, building up forces, holding lots of exercises, trying to deter each other. And I think what's interesting is that now, a year later, with all of these things that have happened, the smart money is probably still on a European security order based on deterrence in which Western states and Russia are building up and trying to frighten one another away from taking any aggressive action. And, you know, this didn't work uh, before 2022. If this is where we're headed, the risk that it's even less stable than what we had beforehand is pretty high. The next crisis then is going to be even scarier. There is a certain amount of wishful thinking on all sides of this conflict when they think about how it ends. The Russians think that they're going to get a friendly Ukraine out of all of this. That's completely insane at this point in time. In Ukraine and in the West, you get these occasional fantasies about how the Russian government will collapse or Russia will fall apart. Look, nothing is impossible, but if Russia falls apart, if the Russian government collapses, it's not something that Western states or Ukraine are going to accomplish, A, and B, it's just not that likely. Because of the ways in which Russia has prosecuted this war, there is a very strong desire to see the people responsible for these war crimes and for the aggression itself be punished somehow. And, you know, that's very understandable. But if one's narrative of justice requires the punishment of the entire Russian government, it runs into something of a logistical problem, which is how are you going to do that? And particularly, how are you going to do that if you still want to get to a place where there is a peace, a peace on Ukraine's terms, a peace that returns sovereignty to Ukraine, right? That's what ostensibly we're looking for. Well, who do you make that peace with? You have to make that peace with Russia. The odds are, unpleasant as it may be, that the government in Russia that survives this war is going to be the government in Russia that waged this war.